So good morning. It is Travels with Dottie and it is the 19th of April 2024 and I'm pretty excited because um, if you saw my last video I got this amazing new camera. I found a decent place to mount it here um, in the car and it's going to be a great driving um, camera and uh, here's one of the features that's great. I just tap if I'm going it's headed um, over the through my uh, windshield but I just tap this button here and it turns around it focuses in on my face and here I am talking to you face to face so that's pretty cool um, it also uses my uh, takes advantage of my DJI 2 microphone which it hooks to automatically and the sound is really superb and right now I am headed to the Pahrump Museum. Um, hopefully they'll let me record in there and I'd be really surprised if they don't allow me to record in there. And I'm gonna show you about the history of Pahrump, Nevada. I've shown you lots of sort of exciting things to do, places to eat, um, uh, casinos, and local businesses, but this is where the history is of Pahrump. And I always wondered, from the first time I ever heard the word Pahrump, where did that come from? Well, I can tell you what I do know, that it is Indian. So, and we're gonna find out a lot more about that today. And um, it's really close to here. It's just, I don't know, a mile and a half, two miles away. And we are gonna go there right now. And I'm gonna turn the camera around as we're exiting Preferred RV Resort. So, um, speaking of Preferred RV Resort, this is where, this is kind of my home base, and I'm a member here, and um, I, I've talked to, about this quite a few times, uh, and there's been, I can tell from some of the comments, there's been a misunderstanding. Um, it, and it has to do with the, the idea that I said, hey, I bought a membership here and I got a deed from the county. And that kind of implies that what I've done is I've bought a lot or a little plot of land or a RV space that's totally mine in the resort. And that's just not true. That's not how it works. The membership um, is represent ownership, but it's a fractional ownership of the whole resort. It's a fraction of one over 2,570. That's, I know that's small, but it doesn't cost that much. If you buy a brand new non-used membership from the resort, it's about $5,000, but you can get it for half that or less on the secondary market. So you buy your, uh, you, you buy your ownership, you, um, they process it th um, through the county, the county sends you a deed saying, you know, you have a fractional ownership of this business and real estate. So it makes me feel good about my domicile. I'm actually legally a landowner, but um, but it doesn't it, it doesn't entitle me to a particular plot, a particular site. Every time I come here and check in, whatever site there are going to be sites available, and I'll choose one. I can stay only up to nine months in a year, and I have to be out for three. So um, it's not a classic year-round thing. Um, what benefits do I get? Well, I, I get 35 days at um, $6.75 a night. Each year I get 35 days of that. And every day after that is $15.75. Now that includes water, sewer, electric, and taxes. So that's, you know, $15.75 a day, multiply that out, that's under $500 including utilities. That's that's a great rate. Um, what did I pay for my membership? I paid about $25 or $2,600. Um, and so it's going to take a while for that membership to pay for itself because I can, as a non member, I can go and I can get it for $600 a month. Um, so I'm saving about $100 hundred dollars and change a month by being a member and I'm maybe here for five months out of the year so that's five hundred dollars a year but then I have to pay 325 
for a membership fee. So that brings me down. I'm saving just a couple hundred dollars a year. That you know that would take you know over 10 years to break even. So I just wanted to be clear about that. Um, if you do want, there are places that absolutely you can buy an RV um, uh, spot that's all your own. There's one here in Pahrump. It's under the Escapees organization umbrella. And I'll put a link into the um, description here. But you, it's a membership like this, but you do get your own lot. Right? And you can stay there year round if you want. Um, but it doesn't include electricity. You have to pay your own electricity. It includes water and sewage. And each lot has a, um, like a little shed on a concrete slab built on it. Um, but you get that. It's your site. And you can stay there forever if you want. Um, that's $10,000. Um, a, a catch there is that there's a two-year waiting list and you have to put down a $2,000 deposit um, to get on that waiting list so um, that's kind of a different kind of thing that, that's available here um, and their annual dues are $1,200 a year so there's no free lunch <laughs> definitely there's no free lunch so I am looking for the museum here um, uh, I passed it the other day, so I'm pretty sure I know where I'm going. But if not, <laughs> we'll be on the road for a little while. But I'm pretty sure it's on, uh, I think the address is East Basin Road, and it's down here on the left, I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't see much down here, but it's, I'm pretty sure it's here. Maybe it's this brown building down here. We'll see. Um, but anyway, I wanted to sort of clarify that whole thing about the membership. Um, I know it's a little complicated, but like I said, there's never, there's never a free lunch. Um, and there are things about that escapees um, membership that I need to go out there and ask them some questions. Like I know when they rent spots to the public and it's like if you rent my spot, um, do I get that income or part of that income? It really didn't say on the website. I'm going to ask him that. Um, if I put a $2,000 deposit and I change my mind when my name comes up, do I get it back? And the answer is going to be, yeah, yeah. It says it's refundable. Um, uh, what other, so I don't know if they share in the income, if they rent out your spot when you're not here. Um, I'll, I'm going to go by there and ask some questions, and maybe I'll do a whole video on it. As a matter of fact, I think there are going to be enough people that will be interested, so that's what I'm going to do. And let's go into the museum and check things out. Tell me about the museum. What are we, uh, tell I'll me what. I'll tell you about Pahrump. And, and Pahrump, yeah. Which is the museum. The, um, Pahrump was basically farming, ranching, originally Southern Paiute Indians. Uh, they did cotton from about 1945 to the early 70s. The whole valley was cotton, mm -hmm. and we had a cotton, almost about by preferred is uh, the Pahrump Nugget. That's where our cotton gin was. They got electricity, 1963 telephones in 1965 so it was very rural so how is it the cotton did well like we're in the middle of the desert it's, so well egyptian cotton pima cotton it's a specific type of cotton that does well so if you just came and put regular cotton seeds in they won't grow it has to be that specific type that will okay. grow here and there's are there water sources here in the there valley was. that it, Every, there everything comes from our aquifer and so we, at one point when they were doing uh, the cotton, we had a lot of water. Matter of fact, they had to cap the wells because there was so much water coming out. Now, because you have people that need water on a daily basis, of course, the aquifer has gone down. Okay, so... So we also have over 9,000 veterans, and we are considered a Purple Heart town, meaning at least five of those veterans have earned their Purple Heart. And in my exhibit back there, I do have a, a Purple Heart uh, that was given to us. And 
we have, um, what else can I tell you? Well, I'll just look around and if I have any questions, I'll find you. Absolutely. Find now, you. we are in the middle of doing a rummage sale in my back room back there. So that kind of will, uh, the test site information is back there. But the rummage sale will be forefront. All right. Some artifacts from way back when. Eighteen ninety. Here's a picture of a cotton picking machine. She referenced the the cotton and here's all oh, look at this is an old style slot machine that i remember from the 80s when i lived in la and traveled to las vegas this is what they looked like and uh so it said over eight eight thousand veterans in pahrump so Check out these uniforms. <sighs> There's some authentic um, medals, including a purple heart there in the in the medal. More military artifacts. Looks like ammo cases. There's an old safe. No. Image of an old prospector. It's like more mining equipment. The one that's in the box and under the starter set. Remember the good old days. <laughs> you do. I remember phones like that, that's for sure, in the 60s, early 70s. I guess it was early 70s we got introduced to Touchtone. That was a big deal. That's how they used to connect phone calls in the day. Radio equipment. More radio equipment down here. More typewriters. This uh, Smith Corona. That, that's more like the one that I was used to using back in the day when I was in college. We all had typewriters. Oh, let's see what we have back here. Looks like there's stuff they're selling back here. Mystery package. Mysticals. <laughs> I'm sure these are donated things that are going to fund Find the museum through the proceeds. So if you're interested in getting some bargains, I'll give you an idea of what they have for sale. Which one's that? She's got her hand on. 
Wait, she has it in her hand. Oh, she got it in her hand. She's gonna buy it. Collection of furniture. All sorts of various things they have. Little works of art. Toys. Can be a member of the museum, fifteen dollars a year for an individual and twenty-five a year for a family. Help keep the museum and program open. Yeah, because it was a PDF. I didn't know this. The birds sometimes um, get little places in the cactus to protect their eggs. Look at that. It's pretty cool. I would go back and wander around, but I'll wind up buying something. I might on a download scale. Right behind you. Excuse me. All right. Throw about that area. What'd you say? Oh, here's some cameras. My dad would love this. Especially that one. That's a Kodak in Kodak camera. No way. Circa 1960s. I had to get rid of one. My dad worked for Kodak for uh, 37 years. Let's get a better shot of that Kodak camera. There it is. There's one of the early Polaroid cameras, a little bit later one, and later still. Oh, yeah, she's a 33-year-old. She's staying with granddaughter. I love her. She's very artistic. And some movie projectors. More? More? Okay. Yes, that's hot. Okay. Yes. Uh oh. Yes. 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 Close five. Yeah. So I kind of lost track. That was. Oh, well, let's see. Let's back over here. Here's an old painting. Look at all the oxen pulling these big heavy wagons. That is representative of the borax industry, which is real big in this area and um, around Death Valley, which is very close to here. He didn't hit Death Valley in a little less than an hour of drive. Some irons. Okay, so I got this. Well, well, I have 15 for you now because you bought that and that one of these got to the park. Okay. And that is 20. That's a dollar. That's five. Oh, that's 20. That's a dollar 21. No, I'm not sure about the yet. Okay. <laughs> that was So this is this is a replica. It's not the real thing. It's a replica. 1866 Yellow Boy Winchester. That's what they look like. Yes. 
sometimes come out without smoke. Ah. It's almost the only time it's I almost come out sacrilege. With, without something is when they don't have it. That's when I come out without something. Because I don't go to the store unless I know. But then I've been like here, it's. You know, I've been buying stuff for the Amagosa School for the Home Economics class that I sponsor through DAR. Oh. So I'm doing that. Stuff a bunch of the stuff there. I bought a few bears. Oh, uh, yeah. should have known that for that. Uh, giving you over some baking pans and things like that. Well, she might be able to get a lot of I have some cabinets in them. I, and I've got several marked off still that I don't want to go into again. Why do I need three pizza pans? Why do I need four baking pans and a cook? That's right. Why do I need a cook? Because <laughs> you want to know why? Well, I love to read. I love reading cookbooks. That's the other thing. I bought two cookbooks. I bought a, a Chinese cookbook and some things else. Because I like reading them. I will probably never make anything. I hate cooking so much. <laughs> but I like reading them. Yeah, you know, I drank last night. I was so hot. I'm going to try to call me back in a minute. I will make it pass through. I was busy and I was thirsty. And I got. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. I'm going to cook chicken. I'm going to put the chicken in there too. I don't want to go. Well, that was the Perrault Valley Museum, and it was Mount Charleston off in the distance, and there's my car. So I sure hope you enjoyed the visit, and you might want to stop by here and see what it's all about for yourself. I'll see you on the next video. Take care.